people have long been frightened by the very possibility of collision of the Earth with cosmic bodies. Surely you have watched such films as Armageddon or Melancholy, or heard about the famous Tunguska meteorite, saw Star Falls, or witnessed the recent fall of the Chelyabinsk meteorite. Despite the fact that 2,000 tons of meteorites fall on the Earth every year, the likelihood of a meeting of our planet with a large asteroid capable of causing the death of civilization, fortunately, is still negligible. However, not everyone in the solar system is as lucky as we are. Jupiter's moon Callisto is rightfully considered the record holder for the number of collisions with cosmic bodies. Like other Galilean moons of Jupiter, Callisto was discovered by Galileo Galilei in 1610. She got her name in honor of the character of ancient Greek mythology, the mistress of Zeus, Callisto. In early astronomical literature, Callisto is referred to as the fourth moon of Jupiter. The first breakthrough in the study of Callisto was made by the spacecraft Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, during their flyby around Jupiter in 1979 and 1980. They photographed more than half of the surface, and obtained accurate data on the mass and shape and temperature of Callisto. In the period from 1994 to 2003 years, the Galileo spacecraft, created to study Jupiter and its satellites, made eight flights near Callisto. He passed at a distance of 138 kilometers from the surface of Callisto and took many photographs of individual regions of the satellite. In 2000, during its voyage to Saturn, the automated interplanetary station Cassini acquired Callisto's high-resolution infrared spectra. In February and March 2007, New Horizons Station also took a number of new photographs of the moon of Jupiter. In 2020, a joint project of NASA and the European Space Agency for the study of Jupiter's moons and its magnetosphere, the Europa-Jupiter system mission, was supposed to start. The alleged mission will consist of four vehicles, after Titan and Ganymede, Callisto is the third largest satellite in the solar system. Its radius is 2,403 kilometers, which is two times the radius of Pluto, and its diameter is comparable to that of Mercury. However, the first planet of this solar system is still three times heavier than the moon of Jupiter. The temperature on the surface of Callisto ranges from minus 193 Celsius to minus 108. Due to the tidal forces of Jupiter, Callisto, like our moon, always faces its planet with one side. It revolves around Jupiter in a regular circular orbit at a distance of 1.88 million kilometer and makes one revolution in about 17 days. If you were on the surface of Callisto, then Jupiter in the sky above your head would be about nine times the size of the moon in the Earth sky. The average density of Callisto is about five times less than the density of the Earth. This can be explained by the fact that the satellite consists of approximately equal amounts of rock and ice. Spectroscopy carried out by the Galileo spacecraft revealed water ice, carbon dioxide, silicates and organics on Callisto. The thickness of the ice on the surface is about 200 kilometers. According to Galileo's measurements, there is 10 kilometers of saltwater ocean under the ice layer, then there is a kind of mantle of a mixture of ice and rocks, the density of which increases towards the center. Callisto appears to have a poorly defined core, which is unusual for such large objects, it is assumed that the water of the subglacial ocean has a temperature below zero degrees. But due to the enormous pressure and the presence of a small amount of ammonia, or other antifreeze, it is in a liquid state. The presence of the ocean in the bowels of Callisto makes it one of the possible places for the presence of extraterrestrial life. However, the conditions for the emergence of life on Callisto are less favorable than on the other moon of Jupiter, Europa. Despite the large amount of ice, Callisto has a very dark surface. This is due to contamination with cosmic dust and other impurities. The density of craters on Callisto's surface is so great that almost every new impact crater overlaps the old one, or lies so close to the neighboring one that it destroys it. The presence of such a huge number of impact craters indicates a large age of the satellite, which, according to some estimates, is about 4 billion years. No signs of tectonic or volcanic activity have been found on Callisto. 
Obviously, the main role in the formation of its relief is played by meteorite strikes and other impact events. Callisto's surface can be divided into cratered plains and light and dark smooth plains. The crater plains are the oldest parts of Callisto and are covered with a mixture of ice and rock. The bright plains include impact craters like Biro and Lofn, as well as Plimpsists, tracks from older and larger craters. An interesting feature of Callisto's landscape is the many ring structures and chains of craters that form slopes, bridges and sediments. The largest ring pieces on Callisto are Osgard and Valhalla. This is the result of the collision of Callisto with large asteroids, the size of which exceeded 10 kilometers. After such a large-scale impact event on the satellite's surface, a system of dozens of concentric rings was formed. The diameter of Valhalla is approximately 3,800 kilometers, the diameter of Osgard, in turn, is about 1,600 kilometers. Based on the number of more recent craters, both Valhalla and Osgard are over 3 billion years old. Common impact craters visible on a satellite range in size from 0.1 to 200 km. Small craters with a diameter of up to 5 km, bowl-shaped with a flat bottom. The largest craters like Doe and Har are dome-like, which is the result of tectonic uplift after the collision. Callisto has an extremely thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and possibly molecular oxygen, as well as a relatively powerful ionosphere. In its vicinity, a relatively low level of radiation background was recorded, about 0.01 rem per day, that is, it is practically safe for humans. It is these factors, as well as the presence of water, that allow us to consider Callisto as a future home for our sweats. In 2003 NASA conducted a conceptual study called Human Airplanes Exploration, HOPE in which the possibilities for the development of the outer planets of the solar system were considered, special attention was paid to Callisto. It was proposed to build a station on the satellite for the processing and production of fuel from the surrounding ice, for spacecraft heading to explore the most distant regions of the solar system. From the surface of Callisto, you can remotely, almost in real time, explore the Jupiter satellite system. The estimated time of stay on Callisto is from 32 to 123 days, and the duration of the flight will be from 2 to 5 years. NASA research suggests that a manned mission to Callisto will be possible by the age of 2040. All this suggests that the wildest fantasies of science fiction writers of the 20th century can become reality during our lifetime. And who knows, perhaps in the near future, humanity will leave not only the Earth, but also its native solar system, write in the comments about what amazing moons you would like to know. Like it if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you!